Hello, my fellow wizards. I'm sure you've noticed by now, but Novus is officially live. God, okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, stay calm. everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm. Wait, 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 wait. With this new update comes Arch Mastery and the new school pip system. If you're confused about how Arch Mastery works, I'll leave the update notes and some other guides in the description below. But essentially, with this new system, school pips can act as power pips for schools other than your native school and can be changed even in the middle of battle, allowing you to use power pips for any school spell you want. School pips also always can act as power pips for your native school, so you don't sacrifice anything by generating different school pips. For example, as a storm wizard, I can use a life school pip as a power pip for storm because it's my main school, or as a power pip for a life spell. And yes, this does mean you can essentially become a master of all school spells like the freaking avatar. Go nuts, guys. Only the avatar, master of all four elements, could stop them. To begin generating school pips, you need to have the Arch Mastery stat, which your wizards start getting naturally at level 50 and which can also be found on certain jewels, higher level decks, and pet talents. You'll notice that the new spells from Novus require certain school pips to use and that all the Lore Master spells have been altered to require school pips as well. Now this may freak some people out because they rely on using the old lore master spells at lower levels than 50 and are now effectively locked out from using those spells because they now require school pips. I know for many low level death and life wizards for example, spells like Ratspin, Ship of Fools, and Deer Knight acted as helpful replacements since they don't have a trainable 4 pip AoE like all the other schools. For some reason. Without access to these spells, questing becomes much more tedious without a reliable AoE to quickly wipe out mobs. However, don't panic just yet, because I'm here to help you get easy access to school pips as low as level 1 so you can still use any spells that require school pips without needing to be level 50 or above. The easiest way to access school pips before level 50 is to simply purchase the cracked Arch Mastery Opal for gold at Rock Hammer's Jewel Works in the shopping district. There is no level requirement for this jewel, so the only thing holding you back is the slightly expensive cost of 10,310 gold per jewel. If you need help getting early gold in the game on a new wizard, check out my video covering the topic. Once you have the jewel for Arch Mastery, you simply need to slot it into any gear with a tier-shaped slot available. Athames, rings, amulets, and decks all can have open tier slots available for you to use and can be easily browsed for in the bazaar. Worst case, you may need to unlock a tier slot if it's not open on a piece of gear, but this can be done with socket wrenches which drop throughout the spiral or by simply paying a small amount of crowns. In low-level PvE, you only need one point in Arch Mastery to begin generating school pips, so one slotted Arch Mastery Jewel is all you need to use school pips until level 50, where you'll start gaining the stat naturally without the need for a jewel. Once you have the Arch Mastery stat, you can set which type of school pip you want to generate through an option which can be found here in your deck tab. You can also change what school pips you want to generate in battle at any time by using the new option, which means you can use several different types of school spells in one battle if you'd like. Go full on rainbow if it makes you happy. Imagination. In this fight, for instance, I have my deck set to generate a Myth School Pip, which I need to use my spell Splash Quatch. Then I switch my School Pip menu in the middle of battle to generate a Death Pip next, so I can use it as a Power Pip to cast Ghoul on my second turn and finish off the minion. You can see just how much variety this new system brings to the combat system. So, what about Life and Death Wizards who don't have any of the Lore Master AoE spells? Well, the good news is you now have other options available to make up for the lack of a 4 pip AoE. Because you can use school pips as power pips, you can now train other school AoEs and use them instead of a life or death spell. Your options for trainable 4 pip AoEs include Fire's Meteor Strike, Ice's Blizzard, Myth's Humongo Frog, and Balance's Sandstorm. The only issue standing in your way is training points, which are in limited supply at low levels. Many of the school AoEs can require up to 6 training points to reach since you have to train earlier spells to have access to higher level spells, so this can be a hefty investment and take away from your ability to use those training points for helpful utility spells such as the Elemental and Spiritual Blades, Faint, or Universal Tower Shield. If you want the most bang for your training point buck, I would recommend either Blizzard or Sandstorm as your fill-in AoE for a life or death wizard. Humongo Frog and Meteor Strike both cost 6 training points to access, the Golem spells are optional, and their lower level spells don't have much utility besides the shields, besides maybe Fire Elf as a low level shield breaker. 
Ice may also cost 6 training points to access Blizzard, but at least you gain access to 2 sets of utility shields with Volcanic Shield, which protects against the hardest hitting schools of Storm and Fire, as well as the Universal Tower Shield. The downside is that Blizzard is one of the lowest AoE damage options, so there is a trade-off for the extra utility spells. Balance, on the other hand, is the least expensive of the group, with only 5 training points required for Sandstorm. You also gain access to Weakness, which can be useful when supporting, and Sandstorm hits slightly harder than Blizzard while also having higher accuracy. With School Pips, any of these AoEs can act as a fill-in for life or death's lack of AoE, so just consider your options and playstyle when choosing. Other factors to consider include Blade Utility, like Balance Blades and Spiritual and Elemental Blades to buff your off-school AoE. If you're life or death, you probably already want to train spiritual blades, but then you might also have to train elemental blades and use another training point if you want to use Meteor Strike or Blizzard as your AoE, whereas if you used Humongo Frog, you could just use a spiritual blade and have access to your native school blade and the myth blade with only one pip used. If you don't have any training points to spare, there are other options like pets or amulets that give AoEs or various blade cards before level 50, and there are also jewels like the Deer Knight Onyx, which can give you access to Deer Knight as early as level 25. We may also soon see pets that give Arch Masteries a talent if you want to stick with a pet route too. Obviously, treasure cards for blades, AoEs, and any other useful school spells you don't feel like training are always available at the Bazaar and other TC vendors for gold, so that may be another great option depending on your situation. Honestly, gear or pets that give you multiple types of blades or universal blades like Balance Blade or Dragon Blade may be great choices going forward, so any type of school spell you use will always be buffed. The point is, with school pips, any of these spells can now be used much more easily, allowing you so much more customization with your wizard and battle tactics, so have fun with it! Alright my fellow wizards, that's how you can use Arch Mastery and School Pips at any level in Wizard 101. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing, and as always, I hope to see you out there in the spiral, and happy questing!